special episode of the Silver Screen Scarehouse, and Lenny and I are going to be looking at three films from a director who tends to cause divisive opinions. That would be Jennifer Chambers Lynch. Uh, she's an accomplished writer and director who works in both film and television, but she causes fights among the honey specifically. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're going to talk about Boxing Helena, which is her feature directorial debut, Surveillance, which was her second feature that came 15 years after Boxing Helena, and then what might be her most controversial film, Chained. So let's start with Boxing Helena from 1993. It stars Julian Sands, Sherilyn Fenn, and Bill Paxton. Uh, Mr. Sams plays a surgeon who becomes obsessed with a woman he once had an affair with. And in order to keep her, he amputates her limbs and keeps her captive in his dead mother's mansion. Like you do. (laughs) Now, (laughs) you have very specific feelings about this, so I'd love for you to speak first, Lenny. I do. Um, I actually... It's so hard to talk coherently about this. I avoided this movie for a long time because as a film fan, especially when you're a film fanatic, you hear the phrase worst movie ever thrown around a lot. And I've heard it applied to plenty of movies that I genuinely have ended up loving, like Plan 9 from Outer Space. You know, it it has its own charms and maybe it takes time to love a movie like that. So about a year ago, I think, I when I still had Netflix discs, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get this movie sent to me and I'm finally going to watch it. And as I was watching it, I was so angry that I was writing my review as I was watching it. Like it was a real time rage review. And if I went back and wrote it now, I would probably be a little kinder to, to Jennifer. Um, but my feelings about the movie stand. Um, <laughs> I, everybody in it is awful and not like character awful because I can handle movies where you don't like anybody, but the acting is atrocious. Uh, Julian Sands is a giant simpering man child and I have no patience for characters like that. It really bugs me in any movie where your main character is just so obnoxious. You want to reach through and strangle them. Um, I wanted more from Sherilyn Fenn, who just seemed like she had no clue what she was doing there. Like, she'd signed on for a completely different movie, and they just kept panning her pages of the script. She was like, oh, fuck, okay, this is what we're doing? All right, I'll do it. Um, Bill Paxton's character reminded me of what his character Chet from Weird Science would grow up into. He just had this ridiculous look on his face the whole time, just completely confused. The story... And this is something that I think is going to carry through all of her films that we're probably going to touch on a lot. Um, I don't know if she's a brilliant feminist or a secret misogynist. Because with the exception of surveillance, uh, which we'll get to, I find she's not very kind to women in her movies. And it's, I don't want to say it's worse here than in Chained, but it's pretty bad. Um, Sherilyn Fenn's character is turned into just, like, a doll for Julian Sands to play with. And I find that whole plot line very bothersome. And then I could have forgiven a lot of it if it hadn't had that bullshit, it's all a dream ending. Which is just a total insult, to I think, to moviegoers when you use that tacked-on ending. Like, you think you're kind of doing something subversive, but, oh, never mind. Never mind. It's okay. It's okay for you to like this. It's not that subversive. It was all a dream. So watching this film was just painful for me because I I really do like everyone involved in it, even Bill Paxton. I don't know why I love the man, but I do. Um, But this this movie is just epically frustrating for me. I I was going to rewatch it for this, and I just could not bring myself to do it. I, I I hear all of that. Um, in 1993, that was the year I was a senior in high school, and that would also be the time that Sherilyn Fenn and Julian Sands kind of ruled the world in the sense of crappy, uh, kind of sexy, horror-type VHS 
rental. So we've got Sherilyn, you know, from Two Moon Junction and Twin Peaks and Meridian. Anybody who pretends like they don't know what I'm talking about is lying. <laughs> You know, and then Julian Sands, Arachnophobia, Warlock, Warlock 2, he was in Naked Lunch. They just, both of them had all this uh, sexy clout coming with them. And again, I was 17. And so, you know, things are like cool at the, the most cool level anything will ever be at when you're that age. And, you know, Jennifer, it's Jennifer Lynch. And it's like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And the poster is gorgeous. I still love that poster. So... The movie at the time, for <laughs> what it was, was, uh, it was different. It was a little bit shocking. And now watching it later, it's really stupid. And Julian Sands, it's really hard to watch him be such a little namby pamby sissy. Yeah. <laughs> but that being said, he did a fabulous job. And the story, the story is stupid. And Bill Paxton, I don't know. I, I don't know what I the memo I'm not getting. Like, he wasn't sexy to me in Near Dark, and he was not sexy to me in this movie either. And he's, I kind of just want to punch him in the face. Oh, no. So, he has an eminently punchable face. It's funny because Bill Pullman is in surveillance. And to me, Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton were utterly interchangeable in the 90s. Like, you could have switched either of them out in any of the roles they played, and you would have had the exact same effect. So it's yeah. funny to me <laughs> they're both in our movies. I actually had a moment of confusion because I actually I watched this after surveillance. I was like, wait a minute, which which one is this? Yeah, exactly. So, is it a good film? No. Everything that you said, I agree with, but the girl in me that, <laughs> that saw this at the time in life. I still have this nostalgic feeling towards it, and I, I enjoyed it. In fact, it was kind of funny. Like, it might be really funny if I was inebriated. I, I think that might be key. I, th I think maybe if I were watching, it's like kind of like The Room. Like, if you watch that movie alone, you're just really pissed off. And you're like, this isn't funny. This is just offensive. But maybe if you were watching it with other people... And you kind of had that experience. It's because fucking Art Garfunkel was in it. What the hell? Like, why is Art Garfunkel in it? He hadn't been in, a, like, as far as I can recall with my, you know, slightly encyclopedic memory, I can't remember him being in a movie such since Catch-22. So it's funny, of all movies for him to pop up in, it would be this one. Right. Um, um, evil guy from Robocop is in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those movies that I had kind of, I had built up in my head because it, in 93 I was 10 and I would see it, I'd see the posters, and I remember vividly seeing commercials for it. And then I remember seeing it in the video store, but knowing that it was a movie I couldn't watch. So somehow in the back of my head, you know, I think I'd built it up to be something that it could never have measured up to, either in terms of being so good it's bad, or considering my love for 90s sexual thrillers, which I absolutely, it's one of my favorite genres, I can, can't get enough of them. It didn't satisfy any of that for me. It wasn't so bad it's good. It was just bad. And as far as the sexual stuff, it just was uncomfortable. Like, except for the opening bit where she's not boning Julian Sands. I guess, was it Bill Paxton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that opening bit, that was, you know, in terms of sex scenes and movies, it was one of the, one of the better ones from the 90s. But then nothing sexually built up to that because Julian Sands just kind of gave off this weird asexual creepy vibe. I don't know. It kind of ruined Julian Sands for me. Like I, I went back and I tried, I tried to rewatch Bruiser and mm, mm -mm. Now I, I look at him differently now. Luckily I love Sherilyn enough that it's, she was good. Like she could have really done anything and I probably wouldn't have hated her, but eesh. Yeah, I think I think it's important to remember that when this came out, it was also in the heyday of David Lynch, which I know we'll end up touching on, but it just, all of this was at that moment in time where none of these people could do any wrong. Right. And it was kind of different when it came out. And now, I will stand behind it. 
I, I would I would recommend it more as something amusing to watch in a time capsule sort of way because that <laughs> love thing you were speaking of. I forgot that in the 90s, all women always stood half clothed in front of open windows and there was always a fan blowing their hair around. Oh, yeah. Gauzy curtains. That. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was big. If, if only we could all look like that before we do it. I know. It's they, they knew how to frame a sex scene in the 90s. I don't know what changed. <laughs> and that was also when the it was a dream thing. That, that hadn't fatigued uh, America yet. So, again, it was not annoying. Watching it now, I can see how you wanted to kill everybody. Yeah. I, I was pretty, pretty enraged. And I, I don't know that it would change. I don't know that that would change. Like I said, I think I would go a little easier on her, having seen a few more of her movies. Um, but uh, yeah, my my opinion, I don't think it's ever going to change a boxing movie. Again, I feel like if I had never seen it until two days ago, I probably would have the giggle. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> But having it have been something that I had kept with me, and I had watched it a few times since it came out, but uh, in all honesty, it's probably been probably six or seven years since the last time I've seen it. So at this point, it was like, wow, this is kind of sad, but yeah, I'll we'll watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I guess, you know, I guess that's a knife up, however you want to take that one. Yeah, that's a knife down for me. <laughs> I couldn't good conscience recommend it to anyone because I don't want them to kill me. <laughs> that would be my fear. So take do do with it what you will. <laughs> um, going going chronologically would be uh, her next movie, which was 15 years later, probably because of how awful the experience of making Boxing Helena was. I don't blame her. Um, surveillance after a spree of horrific murders in the New Mexico desert. Two FBI agents arrive at a small Santa Fe police station to interview the key witnesses. Using elaborate surveillance equipment to view the interrogation simultaneously, Sam Holloway watches as his partner cross-examines the three survivors. As several inconsistencies emerge, it becomes clear that somebody in the room knows the truth behind the slayings. Now, I I watched this in Chained in the same night because I figured, you know, fuck it, I'm just going to get this over with after the experience I had with Chained. And I was surprised that I liked it, which was unexpected. So you go first. Uh, I love surveillance. This is one of those movies that I went around telling everybody, you know, to watch when it came out. It, uh, the opening is still one of the most unsettling opening for me because as everyone knows home invasion is my fear and just be sleeping and have that happen is just so much ugliness I can't wrap my mind around it Mm. and I just like the way it all took place in two really small quiet settings and the way she just you could see this happening to you being trapped on that random weird road in the middle of nowhere with two cops who have nothing better to do but shoot out tires. And, you know, there are serial killers on the loose. There's a twist in it that isn't, like, a huge surprise, but I don't care because I kind of have this weird, um, like, crush on the serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is something that I, I really was looking forward to talking to you about because... Oof. I, I had to do a lot of research on this after to find out if this was just me because I watched so many stupid crime movies, if it was an issue with the acting, or if you were supposed to know right away. But within five minutes, I knew what the quote-unquote twist was going to be. Now, for me, that worked because I hate twist endings. And having that element of the movie removed from me made me happy because then when it when the supposed twist happened it wasn't a surprise I knew it was coming it was interesting to me to see how it was all going to play out now I had somebody else tell me well it's not supposed to be a twist you're supposed to know well I looked it up and it is it is supposed to be a fucking twist I think the issue here lies in the fact that while I love Bill Pullman he is not the most subtle of actors so what I, what I don't know is if you're supposed to catch on and be questioning things right away 
Or was this just a mistake in acting and it wasn't reined in by Jennifer Lynch? Like, what what is your opinion without giving it away, I guess, but what is your opinion on the quote-unquote twist? I Maybe I'm giving too much credit to where it doesn't go, but I feel like it's one of those movies that if you figured it out early, they're totally fine with that, and they're giving you the experience of, like you said, watching it unfold. Right. However, there are people who, they just don't maybe pay the same kind of attention. I don't want to say as much, just maybe they pay attention to different things. And so they have the little girl who they can go with and kind of follow the story. Right. Because I, I felt that, you know, as a movie, it's, you kind of, in the beginning, you feel like it's about these FBI agents. But really, to me, the movie is about the little girl that witnessed everything. And that was what was interesting to me. Like, it reminded me a lot of Rashomon, the way that it plays out. You know, you're seeing one event from all these different viewpoints. And so whether or not you know the twist in the beginning is kind of irrelevant. It doesn't affect necessarily how things are playing out around the twist. So that made it interesting to me. Um, like I said, I well, do... Everybody's flawed, and I think that's the yeah. point. Even... Let's, let's pretend we spoiled everything. We tell you everything. You're still going to enjoy it because every character has 20 different sides that you get to see as all these stories are told. Right. And how they all come together. But not one of those annoying Quentin Tarantino all the stories come together way. Right. Because yeah, you know from the beginning that they're all connected and it's not some ridiculous MacGuffin connecting them. There's a legitimate connection. And what I what I found interesting is we'll talk about Chained in a bit, but what the the thing that you picked up on on Chain that I didn't see the whole um, trying to figure out how to frame it the expectations of men in society uh, the beha- the pressures put on them I saw more of that here in the police officers than I do in Chained. Um, to me, they were more terrifying as characters because of the the actual real world power they have and how those expectations as men as police officers in position of power have just completely eroded their minds and turned them into you know villains at the level of the, the the serial killers i thought they were more terrifying than the serial killers because of the power that they were wielding throughout the film. Um, they made like, especially because one of them is French Stewart, which <laughs> when I saw that come up, I genuinely thought I was watching the wrong movie as like Sherry O'Terry and French Stewart. Did I, did, am I watching the wrong film? Like, what is this? Um, he was fucking terrifying. And that, that was really an interesting approach to those characters. Cause they're, they're like you said, that everyone has flaws. There really is no, innocent character except the little girl so she's kind of your person to cling on to which is why i think the movie is about her that's really interesting and that's not how i took those police officers at all i just thought they were a bunch of nitwits who they're the guy (laughs) that signs up to be cop because they have this warped idea that it'll make them powerful and not because society tells them to be just because they're dipshit well, that's the, I mean, that's exactly it. I think it kind of, it's even more appropriate now when you look at what's going on politi- or not politically, but culturally, you know, that you give a certain kind of mentality a little bit of power and look what they do with it. And I think that was really interesting in those particular characters. So that, that was, that was really effective to me because they really, they really made me uncomfortable. Every scene they were they were in, I was just totally unsettled by them. Yeah, they made me super uncomfortable, and I thought it was really interesting the way she danced around um, the domestic violence in the, in the married couple. Um, yeah, there was there was a lot going on there that we didn't really get to see. Um, I think that was the case with everything. Like, I think you were kind of left to infer your own assumptions. With a lot of the characters. And then, I mean, visually, it's a really interesting film as well. Especially when it comes to the violence. Like, that, there's a car crash scene that just... 
I don't do car crash scenes well. They really stress me out. And this is one of the worst I think I've ever seen. It's pretty great. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's... And... Go ahead. Sorry. I just, the last, the, my big, my last thing I would say on it is there's, um, there's this weird moment of where our killers are making masks and it's really uncomfortably sexy. Yeah, that, that was interesting. I, I had seen some gripes about it before I started watching. Um, and this is something I think I'll bring up when we talk about Chained. But the fact that they were kind of vaguely s and M e, I guess. <laughs> I didn't really get that vibe that much. Um, but the, the, the reveal of the, assuming you don't already know, but the, the reveal of the killer's I thought was really interestingly handled and strangely romantic. I, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. It was, it was interesting. It's definitely of her movies. I've seen my favorite by far. That's a knife up. Yep. Two knives up for surveillance. What? Yes. Yay. Yes. Big knife up for surveillance. So. Yeah, before we move forward, I, I have to say the beautiful Julia Armand is in this film and she's, you know, she's just stunning to look at in general. So she's, just watch surveillance. She's great. I wish she did more. Um, unfortunately, I think the last thing she did was that Witches of East End show. Was on that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I always <laughs> liked her. I always liked her. Well, speaking of her. She does uh, have a part in the next film, Chained, uh, which stars Vincent D'Onofrio, and he plays Bob. Bob's a serial killer who uses his cab to pick up new victims, and one day, he ends up with a young boy in the back with his mom, and after killing the mom, he decides to keep this young man and call him Rabbit and kind of groom him into his lifestyle. So, again, Lenny, I'd love to hear why you were so upset about this. I I wasn't just upset. I was viscerally upset. Like I was sobbing by the time I got to the end. I was such it was such a combination of anger and just total devastation that I couldn't really accurately convey what I was feeling when that movie was over. Um to start with, all right, I think this is a good time to bring it up. One of my main issues that seems to be across the board with all of her films is that critics seem really eager to compare her to her father. Um, I don't think that's fair. Uh, I did it in anger after watching Boxing Helena and not realizing she had made any other movies at the time. So that was where my anger came from. But it seems like as time goes on, people are insistent on comparing her to her father. And I don't think that's fair because she's a completely different filmmaker. Um, That being said, I don't quite see what you saw in Chained. Um, To me, it was just a really dirty uncomfortable really violent film uh in which women were raped and beaten in front of a small child for a good portion of the movie um i i couldn't sympathize with anybody but the child and then there comes a point in the movie where it feels like you're supposed to start feeling sorry for the vincent d'onofrio character and i couldn't get behind that because at this point we've been watching him murder and the rape is mostly implied. Um, but when it gets to the ending, like I was, I could kind of get my mind around what you were saying about male expectations and the stuff with his father. I, I can kind of get that, but then the ending made me so mad. It is so nihilistic in the way that it is portrayed, that it, I mean, it's basically just saying everyone is sh- is shit. No one is any good. It doesn't matter where you go, especially dads. Like, it seems really anti-dad. I just got a serious father issue vibe off this movie. Um, it just made me uncomfortable, and not in a good way. It wasn't the kind of uncomfortable where, you know, I sat down, like, after watching Martyrs, where you sit down and you really want to kind of wrestle with your own feelings about life it just made me want to die 
Like, I, I didn't know what to do with myself afterwards. I ended up watching Surveillance, which I'm glad I did, because that actually made me feel a little better. But initially, when that movie was over, I just felt like shit. <laughs> and it has been a long time since I had that kind of reaction to a movie. So, I mean, I, I'm definitely interested to hear you hash it out, why you saw what you saw in it. Well, to touch on, you know, people bringing up her father, I know that I've done it and you had some choice words for that. But I guess I feel like if you don't want to be associated with your father, then you change your name and you don't have your first two movies uh, billed as being executive produced by your father. Right. Well, you when you compare her, you don't do it negatively. You don't make cracks about like, oh, she's the apple fell so far from the tree, and oh, she's nothing like her father. Like you don't do it in a in a patronizing way. Like a lot of the reviews of stuff that I read was very patronizing. I think it, I just feel like it's unavoidable because she didn't do an Emilio Estevez or a new right. and so she kind of just owned it right from the beginning, right. and she doesn't care. And right. she is her own person in her own right. And yeah, Box and Helena, you're like, clearly you are your father's daughter. But Chained is all her. I feel like this was all Jennifer Lynch. And it's based off of a play. And the play was actually written by a man. And she did the screenplay for the film. But um, I guess what you just said, how you felt after watching Chain is how a respectable man feels after watching Martyr. And so that's why I took myself out of my visceral reaction to it and tried to look at it the way we look at martyrs as women. Mm-hmm. Because the only reason I was pointed to this movie was because a lot of men that I had been speaking to at the time were talking about how it really upset them. And somebody specifically said, you should watch the film. And I thought, well, why is it men? Men are never upset about anything. And that was how I viewed it because it is, it is a choice. Rabbit is given a choice. You can, there's all these chances he could have killed Bob, but he didn't. He, 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 he drank the Kool-Aid, but when it came down to it, you don't know what he's really going to do. And when you're a child, you believe everything you're told. I mean, quite frankly, as a 39 year old woman, I'm pretty sure God still sees everything I do and he calls my mom every day and tells me what I did wrong. (laughs) So if you're a rabbit and you're literally chained to a wall for your adolescence and you are being told that women are objects and they're pieces of like meat, they're literally pieces, they're puzzles that you need to learn how to take apart and put back together. It's amazing to me the choice that rabbit did end up making. And then at the end, where you got really mad, which I understand, I guess to me it was more a commentary on abuse within families. It's just one brother went this way, and another brother went the other way. And really, Rabbit's the one that ends up stopping the cycle, because somehow, some way, maybe because his mother's Julia Ormond, the <laughs> kid manages not to crack under all these pressures. Yeah, I mean, I, it's like I... Mentally, I can see all of those things, and I get it, but there there are just some times when you can't separate yourself from something, and for this one, it was just, it was too much. There was too much of it. There was too much talk of women are shit, women are, women are whores. Like, I could only hear so much of that before mentally I just shut down, and that's, that's like, like, I just could not physically mentally take any more of it and you know in retrospect I I get all of those things I I see what how it might affect a man differently than it would a woman but at the same time um I just I can't I don't know I can't I can't I can't it's sounds ridiculous. I just can't wrap my mind around it. It was too much for me. And I, as as a woman, I couldn't fathom how another woman could make a film like that. And see, it's, it's still messing with my head. 
And maybe that was the point. Maybe it's maybe it's supposed to screw with you a little bit, but I feel like that is the point. It fucked you up. I was bawling, like I bawled after Martyrs the first time I watched this. I was very, very upset, and I had to think about it for days. And then I watched it again, and I've watched it a few times now. And it's not easy. It doesn't get any easier. And when you see the, the reasoning behind why Bob is the way he is, it is one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. Yeah. And it doesn't make anything okay. And I don't feel like she's trying to sell it like that. Like, it's okay that he does it. It's just, that's. That's what he. That's how he dealt with what he had to deal with as a child, and what is, how was Rabbit going to deal with what he was given? That was maybe that's how I chose to take it, just so it would no longer psychologically torment me. And see, I think I went into it with such a blank slate, not knowing, not expecting anything. Like it was literally just something I threw on. I think it was on Hulu. That is not something you just throw on. Yeah, see, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, hey, Vincent D'Onofrio, click. And then I was sitting here for like two hours, like, <gasps> and then it was over. I'm like, I don't know what to do with my life right now. No clue. No, no idea. So, I mean, I, because of the way it made me feel, like, I, I can't suggest it to someone else. You know, it's. If you can handle that kind of stuff, great. Knowing the kind of person I am, I can't say, oh, yeah, it's a great movie. Sit down and watch it. You'll love it. Like, I just, I, I can never do that. It's a knife down for me. Um, I give it a knife up with the caveat that don't just throw it on. Like, don't be sitting out in your fat pants on Saturday and throw on games. That's not going to be okay. <laughs> You have to know that you're going into something that will make you think and will probably prey on your emotions for a couple of days. And that being said, uh, anybody listening, I would love, 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 love for you to um, respond. Men, women, please let us know how Chained made you feel. You know, this is our first, uh, our first special episode, which is why I'm just talking like a maniac. So... Watch all these films, and then get back to Linny and I on Twitter and tell us what you think. And Linny, you can be found. I am at Linny Luhu, L-I-N-N-I-E-L-O-O-W-H-O. And I'm at L-C-F-R-E-M-O-N-T. So thank you, Darkling, for tuning into this very special episode. <laughs>